Hello, everybody. John Donnelly's morning I'm from Your Holistic Academy. And another guest today is uh, Doreen Ritchie. How are you doing today, Doreen? Hi, John. Thanks very much for inviting me. Nice to see you. Lovely to have you on, Dorian, and uh, you're up in Belfast. We met a couple of months ago in Belfast. That's right, whenever you were up doing green screen stuff and yeah, interesting yeah. things like that. Yeah, I had a great conversation, John. A great chat, yeah, and we, we were talking about uh, your life coaching business. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit how you got involved and how do you got into life coaching? So, John, my whole background is business and finance. Um, and basically, I spent 25 years in companies, you know, in all the different sectors ended up in the public sector for 11 or 12 years there and um, sort of always in a senior position of management, always did, you know, I was always bringing my teams on, I was always working a lot under pressure um, and always in finance. So basically a lot of pressure, a lot of deadlines and so on and trying to get the best out of people. Um, and then I realized one day basically, well, lots of other things happened, but then I realized one day basically, you know, I don't like the corporate world anymore. Um, basically, <laughs> it wasn't doing anything for me anymore. And um, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to leave. So I did. And I took a year to decide what I wanted to do. And um, I decided that I really, having had a life experience of lots of things happening to me and coming out of it and coming through it myself with no help, if you know what I mean, um, what I really wanted to do was help other people get through things like that, but right. with help, do you know what I mean? That they, they yeah. could come to me and I, you know, yeah, uh, would coach them. So um, I then went and trained as a life coach. I'm an accredited life coach, you know, it's exams and modules and yeah. uh, I had to do like a coaching session live in front of a, a video. And then that was marked and all this, you know, so I mean, it was, you know, you get people not only to say they're life coaches, they just set themselves up yeah. um, and they've no qualifications at all, but mine's on the, on the, the wall there but um yeah absolutely so then I um and then I set up nearby here uh, in a wellness center where I, which I was managing at the time and um did a whole lot of hours free you know for about three months and then um set up my my practice so yeah, yeah. and um yeah you know I help people change their lives and yeah so now you go back into the corporate world and coach the people yes i uh have -huh, that's uh one one thing i do you know i also do what just one-on-one -on -one of anybody but i'm actually trying to progress more into that because i've done talks i've done workshops and um for the for the enterprise zones for example that was all just taking off before march there um i was i had been appeared in most of the enterprise zones around belfast and one down down patrick um and i had ends the others and then everything closed down, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So I've done a few on Zoom for like a recruitment agency for an SPCC and so on. Um, and those were um, on Zoom during the lockdown, basically because, you know, they wanted to do something for their people to keep them, you yeah, know, on sure. board and everything during the... Yeah, sure. yeah. One of the things that I'm fascinated about, Dorian, is the corporate structures and where all that stress comes from in the corporate world. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's one of the things that fascinates me. And uh, is is there a sort of a is there an argument that the corporate structures are what causes the stress? Yes. Well, a lot of them do exactly because there's no communication downwards. Most yeah. of the communication, certainly from like I'm looking at it from a finance point of view, but also of course I've experienced of other departments and things. Everything is up towards senior management and directors and trustees and everything. Yeah. There's not much that comes down. You know, it's like you just do what you're told, you do your work, you meet the deadline, you get me the stuff that I want on time. And you know what? I don't really care how you do it. Yeah. You know, I, first of all, half of them don't even know what you have to do to do it. You know, they don't know the time it takes. We've got unrealistic deadlines being set for people. Yeah. We've got unrealistic job descriptions or you have a job description and actually you're doing something completely different or you're expected to do more than in your job description and that for people on the ground is extremely stressful very yeah. stressful it's yeah. the uncertainty of maybe not knowing exactly what's expected of them it's the uncertainty of are they going to be blamed if something goes wrong but they didn't really know what was meant to go right do you know what i mean yeah and then add into that of course the last nine months where everybody is stressed about whether they have a job when they go back or not you yeah. know yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's really, really stressful for people. Yeah. And unfortunately, the structure in the company is there to make money for the shareholders. 
are there to make money for the owners yeah. or that's it. Really, yeah. you know, a lot of companies pay lip service to the mental health of their staff, but not a lot of people pay money towards the mental health of their staff. Yeah, yeah. You no. Know? Well, there's a there's a there's a job of work to be done really to sort of uh, yeah. the structures for us to change the uh, yeah. I guess the uh, ethos of the company if you like. Yes. Uh, um, in my in my one to one coaching, you see, when I'm doing um, most of my clientele would be from the business world, whether they're male or female, and so whenever um, I'm talking to, for example, a business owner, I'm always conscious of how they manage. Yeah. You know, and they're maybe coming to me and saying, you know, say they're say they've got three staff or four staff or something that is a small company, you know, and they may be saying, Well, I thought it would have been further forward than this, and I'm really not. Mm -hmm. And while I'm looking for their self-limiting beliefs, which is stopping them going forward, I'm always also looking at, well, what way are you managing your business? What way are you managing your staff that would get the best out of them? Yeah. yeah. You know, I think some of them don't realize that. You know, if you invest in your staff and you actually talk to them and you find out what their problems are, not that you're just going to solve all their problems, but actually yeah. for somebody to be listened to is very powerful. Yeah. So if the employer could do that more often, they would find that they wouldn't be paying out so much sick leave pay, yeah. you know, for people on stress. They won't be paying recruitment costs because people leave. They would have a much more loyal staff base. Yeah. And the people themselves would work together better as a team in the department. Yeah. And all those benefits come yeah. from maybe a few workshops and a bit of coaching for a few managers. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's sort of like holistic coaching where, where it's like looking at the balance, if you like, uh, people's in people's lives, not just the, the, the work. Well, if I'm doing, of course, if I'm doing that on one-to-one, -one, of course, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. If I'm doing it for a company, it's to do with what the company sees as the need, yeah. right? And I would be responsible to the company. However, within that, it would be whoever was being coached would be totally confidential, if you know what I mean. But they yeah. tend to like workshops for maybe eight people, 10 people. And that can be a big, big help. You know, we go through exercises as, you know, how, how would you feel? How would you work with this person? Yeah. How to work with difficult people, for example. Yeah. You know, how to de-stress yourself, you know. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, I mean, a deadline is just it's just a focus on a time and a date for you to have something done. Now, you turn that into stress. It may well, you know, the whole thing is, oh, this is very stressful. I've got all these deadlines. Well, they're not really stressful. There might be a pressure, but you're this what you're the one who turns it into stress. Whenever you whatever you think about it, your narrative, what's your narrative? You know, is your narrative, oh God, if I don't meet that deadline. The boss is going to shout at me is that the climate is that the culture of the organization yeah. you know what i mean if the culture is oh well you know if you don't meet the deadline well we can talk about it or something it's whatever you're telling yourself about the stress or outside you that causes the stress inside you yeah you yeah. cause the stress yourself you know you're the one who's telling yourself the story yeah so what i teach is every it's from the inside out you experience life from the inside out reality is what you make it inside. So it's a switch in mindset, really. Yes, it's completely, it's completely the opposite of the way we've been brought up. We've been brought up to believe something happens there and you feel like this and that's perfectly okay. It caused it. It didn't cause it. You know, otherwise the same set of circumstances would cause the same sorts of feelings in everybody. And that's not the case because two people can be in the same set of circumstances and feel entirely different. Yeah. It's what you're, you bring to your perception of reality you bring your beliefs the meanings that you put on things and your own self-limiting beliefs and whenever you're looking at something the reality that you're experiencing is your perception and the meaning that you put on it mm. so the story you're telling yourself about something you know yeah. um or from the past because you know people could have traumatic experiences in the past and it affects people having the same traumatic experience, it affects them totally differently because they're telling themselves a different yeah. narrative about what happened. Yeah, and it's like even to, even today during the, the current situation out there with, with COVID, I mean, 
people, some people are moving ahead incredibly with their lives and other people Absolutely. are, are yeah. sort of caught in, in a sort of a frenzy or a, a fear. Yes, yes. And, Again, it's the story. It's really That's right. Yeah. What story yeah. are you accepting? Yes. And a lot of people, of course, uncertainty is, it's uncertain. It's, you know, you're insecure about it. So yeah. fear is just insecure thinking. So when you see uncertainty and you have this insecure thinking, because your security comes from yourself, it doesn't come from outside. You yeah. then have all this worry, you have fears, and you're like paralyzed. You don't know how to go forward. Yeah. But someone who... Um, is secure in themselves, is secure in their own capabilities, because I believe we all have innate capabilities for wisdom, courage, resilience, and strength, and so on. Yeah. If a person believes that about themselves, then they enter sort of a state of self-confidence. Self-confidence is just a state that you're in when you believe in yourself and you trust yourself. So they trust that they'll know what to do. So they don't know what's going to happen because life is uncertain, always was, yeah. but they know they'll be able to cope no matter how, what happens. And that's the difference. Yeah, Somebody who's fearful doesn't know that. So you can actually embrace the uncertainty and, and absolutely and, and see it as an opportunity. Almost even welcome it, if you like, uh, and and know that it's 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 going to be there anyway. Yeah, exactly. You know, you can't you can't control what's going to happen, but you certainly can control your attitude towards it. Yeah. You can certainly control what you're telling yourself about it. I mean, I've been coaching people who have just been made redundant yeah. during our coaching. You know. And they say, well, before I would have been absolutely horrified and been so upset and everything else. And now I'm thinking, well, isn't that great? I'm going to get an amount of money in August or whatever it is. And you know what? I'm going to start that business that I always wanted to have. Yeah. And they're looking at it from a completely different mindset of I can do this. Yeah. I trust in myself. I'm confident. Yeah. And I know that, you know, your creativity, once you've got control, your creativity starts coming out. Sure. Yeah. And look at all the beautiful creative projects that people have done during lockdown that they yeah. never would have undertaken before. But never, never would have started. Yeah. No. So that uh, those uh, changes were, were sort of necessary. So I was just want uh, want to ask you about your success rate. Or when you say on your website that you've got a hundred percent success rate with your one to one clients. Well, that's correct because there's nobody, so far as I can remember, that I've coached who did not change. Yeah. No, of course, it doesn't mean everybody's now a millionaire or something like that. For example, I had one girl who was so frightened of going outside and so nervous, she couldn't actually go to work anymore. She was having panic attacks in the car. Yeah. Uh, she had to, you know, lock windows and doors 40 times before she left the house. Now, her, nor her, her big transformation has been able to go to work. But if yeah. I said that to somebody else, they'd say, well, that wasn't a success. Yeah. But actually, that totally changed her life. Yeah. You know, and yet other people have totally transformed their lives and as much as they've left their husbands or wives, they've left home, they've changed their job, they've gone to a different country, that complete transformation, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it just depends what, what is it that they want to do, but everybody, everybody yeah. without exception has changed in some way. That's fantastic, Tony. And tell me, do you then, uh, do you screen clients beforehand or do you accept anybody as a client? No. Um, I would always do, it's called sort of like um, an intake conversation or a, a complimentary session. And that's where we, and of course I would prefer it to be in the flesh, but we can't at the moment. Yeah. Um, that's where I decide, can we work together? You yeah. know, is this the type of person that I could work with? Is it, is it what I offer, what they're looking for? Yeah. You know, because it may well be something completely different. They may well uh be looking for some other kind of coach and then in which case i would i would sort of say well go to this person or this person yeah um, so you then you then know that you will get you will get success yeah well i know they're going to do the work john because yeah. i don't do the work yeah. you know sure. i bring it out of them but they have to do the work and that's the other thing i want people who are committed to doing the work that you know i don't want somebody to come along and say well i'll take a couple of sessions and we'll see how we go you know we want to get past that stage before you come to me because, yeah. you know, I, I wouldn't be able to say then 100% of people were coming to me to have a go. Yeah. You I know mean, what I mean? Maybe that's the bit of, about coaching that some people don't understand is that it, they have to be accountable. Absolutely. And I provide that accountability. And I am challenging as well, you know, because a lot of people just want to sit there and they want you to tell them it's all right, you'll be fine, you know, don't worry about it. And I'm going, like, do you want to change your life or not? Yeah. Do you really, you know, do you really want to make an absolute 
fantastic life for yourself and your family because you can yeah. but you need to work you know you need to have to do the work for it yeah and you're i mean your uh vast experience in the corporate world then is you're using all that experience during yeah. the, with your coaching qualifications then and, and you yeah. also teach in, in in the university as well yes that's right i do a course a couple of times a year for queen's university called change your mind change your life and yeah. then last year i did a, a co-authored a book there activate your life volume two um, and i do public speaking when i can uh, yeah. before the lockdown and so on um yes I sort of try different different things you know um whatever interests me and whatever way I can reach people yeah because I really genuinely want people to live their lives you know too many people just exist yeah and I was the same before I made big changes in my life and um, I was the same sure so obviously your life uh, your own personal life has transformed during oh <laughs> completely like completely like totally <laughs> It's like I lived a life up until a certain point, and now I'm living a second life. That's yeah. how that's how different it is, and that's how uh, amazing it is. Yeah. And it wasn't that the other one was terribly bad; it was just not living as such. But you know, something happened, made me see that we only get one go at this, John. Yeah, sure. It's not a dress rehearsal, you know. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's do it the best we can. Let's get out of it what we can yeah. every moment. Now, was there a sort of a light bulb moment during, or was it just a gradual process? Of no, 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 John. It was a, it was a very bad car accident. All right. Yeah, and um, in which I only had in it, I only had whiplash, and the car was a write off. And the the policeman came along to cut me out of the car, bring me out of the car, boarded off to the hospital, and all. And he said, "Somebody up there was looking out for you, Doreen." And I said, "No, I don't believe in that at all. You know, sure, what purpose would I have?" And he said, well, maybe the purpose was just to live your life. And here's me, yeah, right. Well, when I'm lying in hospital for the next few days and for the next six weeks, trying to get rid of this whiplash and stuff, I thought about that, John, and he was quite right. You know, your purpose in life is to live it. And I wasn't living. I was existing. I was in a bad marriage. I was in a crappy job. Well, you know, I got better. I got, you know, promotion after that. So because I went for it. Yeah. And. Um, but all I did, it was just, you know, get up, do the things, go to work, come home, be unhappy, you know, see him the next day, see him the next day, and weekends you'd work cleaning to do. I mean, come on, how many million people live like this? Yeah. You know, and it's just, we just accepted that that's, that's living. It's not living. Yeah. You know, you really need to grasp it because we only have this moment in time. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, we only live now. The past is gone. We don't get to the future because the future is then now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you can make things happen in the now, you know, once yeah. you realize, you know. So that, that accident was a wake up call, Dorian. Absolutely, John. It was the universe <laughs> on the shoulder doing what are you doing with your life, dear? You know, um, and I had raised three sons. It wasn't like I hadn't done anything, you know. Sure. Um, and I had a good enough job and everything, but it was just yeah, like, who was I? I didn't know who I was anymore. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of my clients have come to me. That's what's, that's what the problem is. They're sometimes in mid years and they just, they're lost. They don't know who they are. They don't know why they ended up where they are. They're totally yeah. stuck. They're totally unfulfilled. They're not yeah. happy. You know, they're sort of going, please, please tell me how to live my life. Sure. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what coaching does for them. Yeah. So that, uh, so that coaching journey then, during, I mean, I, I guess when, whenever that happened to you, you sort of went looking for answers then. As to yes, I did. And I, and I did a lot of self-development, personal self-development um, over the next couple of years, divorced my husband. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was part of it, I'm afraid, John. And um, lived on my own for a couple of years and then basically started going out to connect with people again um, because I knew who I was then and gradually knew better and better as the years went on. Um, and then decided to leave the corporate world and do something completely different. Moved house, moved in with a, a partner and so on. Totally, totally, totally something I had never thought of doing, you know, never thought of starting another life or relationship or anything like that, you know. Yeah. And it just happens whenever you're open to opportunity. Yeah, but it's also a very courageous thing to do just to leave, to leave your, some of I guess you had Everything. security, even though it was, even though you maybe not have enjoyed it, it was, you still had some security. Well, I had the rent coming from the house. That's what I had. Yeah. <laughs> and then I tempt, you know, who's proud? I, I wasn't, it was like, you know, 
I didn't care as long as I could pay the bills, as long as I was able to do what I wanted to do you every day. Prepare to do whatever, whatever, yeah. it takes to, whatever it takes to make the, make the change, yeah. Yeah, and also working on myself internally. You know, I did more, just because I qualified as a coach, I've done a, another course every year since I've done that. And I spent thousands, you know, on, on improving my, my own coaching technique and so on. And that has changed me a lot as well. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier, Dorian, it's about inside out. Yeah. So that's, yeah. That's... It's based on the three P's and the three principles of um, mind, consciousness and thought. It's just it's looking at things to realize that the reality that you're you're thinking you're living in is your own reality. It's a personal reality. Everybody. 7.8 billion people or whatever are walking around in their own reality because your reality depends on your perception and meaning of the world and that is what is in part programmed into you when you were small your experiences and so on have programmed more and we're all creatures of habit 90 percent of what we do is habitual 90 percent of what we think is somebody else's opinion yeah. so whenever you start questioning the thoughts in your head about things about yourself about your beliefs yeah. That's whenever you start to find out who actually you are, that it isn't that you're not just going by what somebody has told you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's when you start to become who you really are. Yeah. It reminded me of the film The Matrix there, Dorian, where. <laughs> <laughs> unplug. <laughs> you, need, you, need to, you need to unplug from the Matrix. Yeah? <laughs> Honestly, it's like that. You know, it is like that. It is like that. You know, you, I'm sure everybody has actually said something to their children and they've heard their mother or their father saying it. Yeah. It's in them. You're programmed. You can't help it. You're a sponge until the age of seven or eight. Yeah. You're just, you don't have any analytic brain. So you just absorb the cultures and the norms of your family and the society that you're in. Yeah. And you take it with you as reality. But it's not reality. Yeah. yeah. Until you, until you find something. Uh, until you question that thought, is that what you still think? You know, do you still think you're no good at such a thing? Yeah. Do you still think you're not, you know, you're successful, but do you still think you're not good enough? Do you still think you're not going to be successful? Yeah. You know, um, yeah. do you still think you're not attractive? Do you still think you're not lovable? Well, no, hang on a wee minute. Where's the evidence for that now? You know, actually yeah. now lots of people love you. Actually yeah. now you've got loads of friends. So why do you keep telling yourself you're not lovable? Yeah, sure. All these self-limiting beliefs that you bring with you that aren't true anymore or that you can change because yeah. it's just a thought yeah so you're basically a uh, create you sort of help your clients to create a new story for themselves yes right? absolutely absolutely and just even even getting them to realize that they can that it is just a story yeah. is like a complete revelation to most people yeah sure <laughs> you know, what i can actually you know yes it's just a thought change the thought now how do you feel you feel better so hold that thought yeah choose that attitude this time next time whatever you know oh, yeah yeah so you love your life now dorian i mean you, you, you come across as so passionate about what you do oh yes i do you know what i really do john and i um obviously during lockdown the business has slowed down a lot but i'm hoping when when we go out again at the other end um that it'll pick up but to be honest, as long as I'm doing something every day that I love, yeah, yeah, that's that's me. Sure. You know? And uh, you do a lot of networking, Dorian. You, you obviously love people and you love connecting. With yeah, people. I love connecting and I love um, I love telling people things like this. Yeah, I love telling them because because they haven't thought about it before, you yeah. know. And then they sort of think, and then they go away and think about it, and then they'll maybe come back a month later and say, "Do I tell me that again?" Because it was really weird, and I just I just thought about that the other day, and I felt a lot better. But some and you go, "That's brilliant," and I'm not. They're not paying me. It's like you're just talking. You know, it's conversations, John, isn't it? It's always getting yeah. into conversation with people yeah. and connecting. And tell us about your book, Activate Your Life. What's, what's in well, it? I just had a chapter. There were thirty of us got together and did. We did our best. Well, people did like exercises and things like that in it. You know, depending on what they're coaching. And mine was just tell, just sort of saying about the inside out way of thinking and, you know, how to change your attitude in every moment, in any moment given you can change your attitude. So, you know, just to sit still, maybe just take a breath when something happens that's really, you know, instead of reacting, take a breath and choose your response. You know, choose your response. You don't yeah. need to respond the way you always have done. You don't yeah. need to react, yeah. you know, and you choose a response that makes you feel better. And then you get to the end of the week and you realize that actually everything that you've done during the week made you feel better. So, hey, have you not had a better life for the week? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. 
it's uh, it's common sense a lot of it too don't you? yeah and then whenever you're choosing to see whenever you're choosing to feel better and you're more optimistic you become calmer you're more creative you make better decisions in your business as well you take different actions and your actions are your experience of life mm -hmm. so you're physically creating a different life from how you think yeah you know thoughts become things and it's true yeah but you're also a financial coach as well, Doreen. Yeah. Yes, I have. Well, because my finance background, I just tend to find, though, that people who come with money problems, the money problems 90% of the time are symptoms of what's wrong. And it's manifesting in that they're overspending or they're, um, they can't spend or, you know, they can't make money to get to a certain level and they suddenly can't be any more successful. They're self-sabotaging. It's because of their mindset around money, you know, yeah. unless they're working 80 hours a week, they think they can't be rich. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But they could have one idea and be a millionaire tomorrow, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but in Northern Ireland, and I'm sure in all of Ireland, we're all taught, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. And if you want to make money, you have to be really hardworking and uh, rich people aren't very nice. And yeah. Yeah. these are the things that we were brought up with as beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. And once those are, again, as a mindset that we can change. Yeah, it's back to the back to those beliefs and how we're how we're conditioned. Uh, Dorian, you know? Yes, absolutely. And you don't realize your subconscious, your subconscious believes everything you tell it, whether it's imaginary or real, or whether it's right or wrong. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You tell it something, it will make sure or try its best to make that happen in your life. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So you tend to self sabotage that, and people know when they're doing it. They're going, well, "Why am I doing that?" You know. Well. Yeah. yeah. Have a, have a think. What are you what are you telling yourself at that moment in time? You know. So how, how can people get in touch with you during that? So well, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook with um as life coach, Dory Richie Life Coach. I've also got private groups on Facebook, and of course, my website is www.doreenrichiecoaching.com. And everything's on there, sort of. And there's a wee button on there to reach me to have we chat. Then I have Calendly link, you know, you can go on and then book a wee 20 minutes uh, chat, um, which yeah. where you'll learn about a wee bit about coaching. I can learn about you and we see if we wanted to go fall forward with that. Great stuff, Dorian. And you're also obviously on the Your Holistic Academy now as well. So we're of course, and I'm looking forward to connecting on there with, you know, organizations and other coaches yeah. and things like that. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant idea, John. I think it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. We're delighted, uh, Dorian, to have you on board, and we're delighted to uh, please come and, and uh, share with us and, and get to know our, uh, all of our other members as well, Dorian. And maybe if you could just put your links into the chat. I will I'll stick them into the comments under this yeah. when it was yeah, up. It's been an absolutely uh, lovely conversation for today, Dorian. Thank and you. It's been lovely for me as well. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Giving me the opportunity to tell all about myself. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Dorian. Thanks, Thanks very much, John. Cheers. Bye.